you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, back to the Massonomics Podcast. Here we are at episode 219. Uh, we're back at making things better than they are in real life, just like we always do. My name's Tanner. And my name's Tommy. Here we are at 219. Of course, the show is brought to you by Dad Jokes, Yum Yum Sauce, K-Swiss, <laughs> and Spike Ball. <laughs> if that was our list of sponsors, <laughs> wow, that would be that would be something else. And like, how do you get money from dad jokes? <laughs> like, how do they, how do dad jokes sponsor the podcast? Also, how do you get money from K Swiss? <laughs> <laughs> That's and Spike Ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was last week's topics of overrated, underrated. This show, this particular show right here, now episode 219, it's actually brought to you by. Texas Power Bars, of course. In 1980, Buddy Caps was on a mission to make the best bar possible, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house, had the best knurling, and it was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, world, and ma massonomics powerlifting records have been set and continue to be set and broken on the legendary Texas Power Bar. To learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one, one for yourself, visit texaspowerbars.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Lifting Large. Lifting Large has set a new standard for customer service within the strength world. They have live website chat support and speedy email responses. Lifting Large is the home of the ground lock deadlift slipper, and they are always in stock and ready to ship. Massonomics listeners can save 20% on all Lifting Large branded products by using our discount code MASS20 at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by Spud Inc. The goal of Spud Inc. Straps is to make products that support sports performance and help everyone achieve their training goals. They make products that last forever, won't bust your budget, and most importantly, leave absolutely no doubt about success when everything is on the line. Make sure to check them out online at spud-inc-straps.com. This episode is also brought to you by Hybrid Performance Method. They are your one-stop shop for all things fitness and online coaching. Whether your goals are training-related, nutrition body composition-related, or both, Hybrid has a program for you. They have dedicated and experienced coaches in each strength and fitness discipline, so you can rest assured that you're in the best hands possible. Uh, if you do uh, get some programs from them or training, you can use our discount code. It's MASS, M-A-S-S, -S, and that will actually save you 5% off any training or nutrition memberships for the life of your membership. Visit them at hybridperformancemethod.com. That's our sponsors, them, and of course, K Swiss Spike Ball, Dad Jokes, and Yum Yum Sauce. <laughs> That's a ragtag bunch, to say the least. Yeah, uh, I did. Uh, I did something interesting related to the Massomics podcast this week, Tommy. I thought you were. I thought you were going to say I did a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did a thing. Uh, now you so, have my attention. I don't know why I did this, or or how i came to it but i listened to episode one of the massonomics podcast wow really because i was looking through reviews or something like that and i just clicked the epi episodes and was scrolling through them i just was like how long is it going to take me to scroll all the way to the bottom here and i got there and i was like oh it's only like 20 minutes long and i was in the middle of working oh, yeah. on some, yeah. somewhere we i was going to be listening we didn't do yeah. our episodes yet then did we no no the first couple are only 20 minutes long so i listened to that first one the first one that we published was not the first one that, yeah, that we was, recorded, though. I think it was, the second one we, it was the second one we recorded, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know exactly why we did it that way, but that, that was that was Tyler's scheme, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember Yeah, the... I don't remember why, because that was intentional from the very get-go. Yeah, um, you know, right. we, we He had more of the vision for it. We had no idea right. what we were doing. So, yeah, he we had were just some there thought process. We had no idea, though. Right. So the first one that was published, we talked about the gym. The gym was moving. Uh -huh. We're going to be moving to oh. our new location. Okay. So the first one we published, which was actually the second one we recorded, we talked about the gym, and it was about 20 minutes long. And I just wanted to share my cliff notes, having uh, it be four years later down the road and having recorded over 200 more <laughs> podcasts since then. <laughs> yep. Like, you might listen to it thinking like, oh, this is going to be terrible. We sucked. We didn't know what we were doing. And I don't think it was terrible at all. Like, there was no weird silence like i thought it had a really decent flow to it and you know we did not sound like dummies i think all three of us sounded like we knew what we were talking about and it you could uh probably view it as 
entertaining or informative at, at some level. But what I would say, it was not very funny. <laughs> it was not. There was yeah. not a lot of like character to like the character to the show is night and day different between then and now. That's the biggest thing I notice as a difference. We've really we've really developed some commentary over the years. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't know if any one of us hardly laughed once more than you would laugh like if you were having a conversation with someone you kind of know Mm -hmm. and someone says something that's kind of a joke almost and you kind of chuckle a little bit whereas now the whole thing's kind of a joke. Yeah, I don't remember laughing a whole lot in the very beginning. I mean, we were definitely having fun, but it wasn't like, all right, we're going to joke around and say almost nothing this entire time, but... Yeah, it has changed a lot, hasn't it? <laughs> well, and I, I don't think that when that it, it evolved more into what it is now, of course, you know, just mm-hmm. over time. At the beginning, we weren't going into it thinking like, yeah, let's just joke around. It wasn't like, let's do a podcast where we joke around with each other and talk a little about a, a little bit about lifting occasionally. I think it was more like, let's do a podcast about lifting. Yeah. It, yes, it was. Then, yeah, lifting and our experiences lifting and right, everything. Right, right. And also, we've said this before too, but the idea then of making it 20 episodes sounded like a vast, large catalog, <laughs> like an incredible catalog of 20 episodes. That seemed, yeah, in my head, that was like some crazy number. And now um, the idea of 20 episodes is like, that's nothing. Even the idea of having 300 episodes, it still feels like, oh, that's that's still not much right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I I did listen to part of the, of the second one too. You know, it was like 20 minutes long. I didn't catch the listen to the whole thing, but uh I did that that was very much the same way and that was just kind of us three all talking about our backgrounds in like oh, lifting and uh-huh. it just caught, caught, you know, it was like taking me back that Tyler was talking he's like, "Yeah, I'm pretty much just getting into this working out thing." Yep. You know, like it's pretty new to me and I just like I forgot that. Like that almost that was and, surprising to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, when he started or when we started, he was just kind of like just getting into it then, yeah. you know, he obviously seems weird had now. an athletic background, you know, he, right, he, right. It's not like he wasn't an athlete of any kind. He, um, but now he's in Europe making a living doing it. So it's like, <laughs> it, oh, how, yeah. how things change. Yeah, because his even, you know, his quote, even as I'm because I just listened to it a couple of days ago, you know, it's like I just got off the couch a year ago and I've lost a bunch of weight like that was yep. his thing at the time was like getting active and losing weight which mm-hmm. is just kind of kind of and we were both like right in the heat of you know we, it was in like april of 16 so we think just done powerlifting meets yep we would yeah, um, we always did a meet in march so yeah we would have just right, finished up right uh, one of our first few meets probably yes so we were talking a little bit about powerlifting meets from back then <laughs> oh that's that's funny but i do think they they were not terrible they none of the like you wouldn't you wouldn't listen to any of it and cringe really. Like I, it wasn't bad. Like I'm like, Hey, that is not bad for some people just like starting out. I don't, you know, I, I get to give us some credit there. I think. Yeah, th- that, that is good. Do you remember what was case was a sponsor then? I know that we had, <laughs> uh, we were in serious talks with them. Yeah, was that what it was? I know we were working on it with them. I, <laughs> I know we. I don't know if Yum Yum Sauce was as popular back in 2016. <laughs> yeah, so the, the we, sponsors have changed a little bit through the years, I guess. Yeah, we didn't talk about lift shorts, apple pies, <laughs> druthers, um, sparkling like, water, sparkling water, like Powered none of that. Awards. No, no, there was none of that. Like all of my favorite things about the podcast now, like none of podcast that existed reviews, yet. Yeah, yeah. Just, and then, Kaz quotes, none of it existed yet. We we talked about our. Um, website that had just launched and that we oh. have cool stuff to check out there we didn't didn't get into specifics about anything on the site but i don't think the lift shirt even existed yet so i suppose our site was like the og shirts and og hats that would have been about it yeah yeah <laughs> which of in at the time we were selling almost none of <laughs> yeah like essentially none of yeah <laughs> yeah in, in uh, some in, things don't change right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> that's that's the old saying. But it is, we did, something came up about Kaz, like Tyler even brought up Kaz, and it's just really funny to me thinking like he's talking about Kaz, maybe like watching him do Strongman on TV or something like that, and just how cool it was. And it's just so crazy to me, it's like, well, yeah, we went on to, we interviewed Kaz twice after this, mm-hmm. and 
like Kaz has sent us some of his coffee and like we've talked to Kaz on multiple occasions and like Kaz is like his quote is this big running joke on our show it's just kind of funny to me it's like at the time it was just he was more this uh fiction um this mythical than figure character. Yeah. yeah and like uh, come a few four years down the road it's like oh yeah Kaz you know it's not the yeah th- it's that not is, the same it's that is funny <laughs> when you think of it like putting it ahead if we would have known that would have been like well Astronomics <laughs> achieved everything it could have ever possibly yes. done. That was it. Yeah, if, if 2016 us could see it now, we'd be like, oh my God, how did yeah. we get there? Yeah. <laughs> Who did they make a deal with to get to this point? <laughs> yeah, not even like it's that great. But yeah, that's no, how exactly. Low, that's but how still, low our expectations were. Yeah, the were. expectations <laughs> were, yeah, absolutely nothing, as right. they should be, right? Yeah, right. That, so that was my one one uh, little comment on that that I thought was interesting. All right, yeah, I'll take I'll take a trip down memory lane here one of these days and yeah. visit it. And, and, and I thought maybe out. we should we should have done one of those uh, YouTube uh, videos where like it's me, you see a video of you and me watching it at the computer and we we talk. Tanner over the and top Tommy of it. react. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah, but also. Uh, bringing the podcast up to modern day now. Uh, the road to 200 is complete. Yeah. But uh, the road to 200 is complete, but that doesn't mean that people have stopped sending reviews in. It doesn't mean they've stopped at all. Last week we announced that we broke the 200 barrier. We actually landed at 202 last week, which was awesome. Uh, you guys did it and you all know about the billboard. We talked about it last time and everyone's been looking at it since and, Oh, one one I didn't tell you this. Okay, one thing before I forget. The president of North Dakota, the man behind that review, messaged he and his wife were asking what how long the billboard's going to be up and what towns people fly into <laughs> if they come to Aberdeen, South Dakota because they're consi- they are actively currently considering flying here sometime over this month because they want to get their picture with the billboard. And let's be honest with the, that's not a joke. I would say with the current state of the world and traveling, we probably did more for the tourism industry in this town than any other, than any <laughs> other person body or agency has done. You mean with those two people, with those two people, coming? yes, yes. Yeah, with those two yes. people considering coming. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it is up until the end of July. So if you want to get your picture with it, you better act quick. You know, there's not going to be a lot of time left there. And in case you're wondering, um, this probably sounds like there's no roads in our town, but it is on uh, South Dakota Street. (laughs) (laughs) It is on South Dakota Street. That's right. That's true. Uh, Dakota Street south of the railroad tracks. Yes. Which which makes it South Dakota Street. Uh, Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. But so we did get another ass load of reviews. We were at 202. Do you know what we ju- want to know what we jumped up to? Well, you said ass load. So to me, that's got to be pretty close to 217. 216. Wow. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That is an ass load. Our, our, yeah, I'm this... glad our ass loads are calibrated <laughs> to be about the yeah. same. Yeah, your ass load is uh, 15 and my ass load is 14. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Funny how it's that close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we got another 14, which is just crazy. That's after we already hit the 200 and people are still clamoring it. I mean, it's not going to be long until we get to start talking about the road to 300. <laughs> and then that means we got to figure out something to do for the road to 300. So that that is true. Like it that's going to be the biggest challenge is how we one up ourselves on these uh uh what do you what do you, uh, these ridiculous publicity stunts yeah, that we I will gladly on. take that challenge on though. So I help people yeah. push us because I want to know what we're going to come up with. Right. So we were talking before we started recording that with these influx of all the reviews every time, it's going to be get the podcast will turn into nothing but ads and reviews. <laughs> so we've de- devised a pretty elaborate strategy here where we're just going to read a few of them each time. Like we're not leaving so, any out. We're just going to leave no. a few. So um, if, if things keep coming in, we're going to have a lot of podcast reviews. If things do slow down, we will get, I mean, no, regardless, yeah. we're going to get to yours eventually. Just it depends on how fast they keep coming in right. with the backlog building. Right. And if we get backlog too much, we're just going to strictly have to have a podcast review episode where we do nothing but read podcast <laughs> the, reviews. The review and sponsorship episode yeah. like we've always dreamed yeah. of. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to hear a few? Yeah. Let's, let's hear a couple of them. Excellent. Okay. First one is from 
uh, their name is Aha is greater than Lacroix. Oh, Aha. A- 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 A-H-A. Is that Ooh, Aha? Not familiar okay. with it. Yeah. Um, like a delicious can of Lacroix, like a warm McDonald's apple pie, like listening to the smooth sounds of how I met your mother, <laughs> like learning how to get strong, stay strong, and how to use your strength, and most importantly, like putting on a comfy pair of oversized lift shorts. That that kind of speaks to me on a on a yeah. deep level there, especially the smooth sounds of how I met your mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Barney uh. Stinson, isn't it Barney Stinson? <laughs> Barney Stinson's yeah. voice piped right yeah. into your ears, yeah. or Marshall, or whatever, Marshall, whatever the yeah. one is uh, that whines Ted, all the. I don't know. Ted, that's Ted most. Oh, Ted. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Marshall's the my the w- one that went on to be in other things. He's the one from. Uh, he's the tall one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that actor's name is. Okay, next one is from Johnson Benji or Benjamin. I'm pretty sure is who that is. He f- follows along pretty closely. He says, most entertaining strength podcast. These guys, Tommy and Tanner, R.I.P. Tyler, will keep you laughing during the (laughs) podcast. Honestly, these guys make things better than they are in real life. Excellent sound quality with voices for podcasting and faces for YouTube. These guys keep it lighthearted while cracking open a crispy boy and opening a bag. A great easy lifting podcast with the best segments. Five out of five, underrated. We do awesome. make things better than they are in real life. There's no doubt about that. Yep. We didn't we didn't have someone say that on accident, that's for sure. No. Next one is from Conrad Rosales. And his title is S I. He says, if you like inside jokes, high quality gear, maybe some expensive shorts, then this is the place for you. Ever wonder how to use your strength or listen to something that's better than real life? Listen to those two kings of Aberdeen chit chat over some warm LaCroix. <laughs> Kings uh, of war- Aberdeen, okay. Yeah, Kings of Aberdeen, and the warm and hot Lacroix. I don't know it, why, but that gets me every time. Like I just, <laughs> yeah. that is just really funny to me. <laughs> yeah, that's something that's really gained some steam lately. <laughs> yes, this okay, okay, yeah. I've, I I pre-read a couple of these, and this one I like this. Um, the title is the show about nothing, but the 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 killer part of this guy's review is his name, and he said his name is. Poon Slayer 69X. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, Poon I'm Slayer 69X. This, guy has yeah. for us. <laughs> um, this show is literally about nothing. I have never learned how to get strong, stay strong, or use the th- strength I've never received, <laughs> but I keep coming back for more. Thank you, Poon Slayer 69X. Um, you know, if he plays his cards right, his name could be up on a billboard someday too. <laughs> yes, uh, that would be something if we put up the put put up Poon Slayer sixty nine. Uh, I wonder if there'd be issues with that. Yeah. We, the the printing company might fight us yeah. on that one a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the last one we'll read for today. This will be number five. Uh, his name is Matt. Is awesome. Title: Road to three hundred. It says, "How many pods could a podcast pod if a podcast could pat?" cast pods <laughs> mm. it's a classic riddle yes it is uh the answer though is 219 <laughs> for now yep so th- those are the ones we got to today we didn't get to some years but we will get to them eventually thank you uh <laughs> thank you again everyone for those reviews special always, s- special thanks to po- poon slayer <laughs> mr poon slayer <laughs> mr 69 x <laughs> that's dr poon slayer to you <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so last week we did mention that the billboard was going up this week. It, uh, it was, we got it out for the world to see and we got some reactions out of it. And most people I think were pretty shocked for the most part that we had a billboard. It's real too. And, it, and it, that it's yeah. real. And that, and yes. And also that it is real. There was a <laughs> lot of those going, going back and forth of people debating whether it is a real thing, but it is in fact real. People have seen it. And, um, I think it I think it was a good idea, Tanner. It was. I think it even turned out to be a better idea than what we when we laughed about it and ori- originally thinking of it. I think it was I think it was actually a great idea. <laughs> yeah, is what yeah. I would say. We don't have many of those, but every once <laughs> yeah. in a while we have a great that, idea. That that was one of them for sure. It was big. It definitely pro- it definitely delivered on the big too. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, we did not let down there at all. No. Wow. So um, I guess that means we're done talking about massonomic stuff now, right? Ugh. 
That's the only reason I came today. I think the I think the podcast is done. That's everything. Hey, be- before we started, you were talking about a show that I'd I'd recommended on the podcast before, and you said you've watched it a little bit. It's uh, The Prophet. Oh yeah. And you said you checked it out. Yeah. And we didn't talk. So what you were saying, you did like it then. I yeah. I've only seen two episodes, but um, it uh, I've I'm getting to the point where I think I've seen almost every episode of Shark Tank now. Yeah. Like to the Another, point where to yeah. the point where it's almost like okay, this show's you get the kinda, formula. Like you get the formula, this, yeah. you get how they're gonna act, and sometimes and, and you're to, like, all right, these they're just being yeah. annoying rich assholes sometimes now well, too. Well, and the longer that show goes on, it's the problem that a lot of shows have. Like uh, Impractical Jokers is a popular show. I was never that into it. I don't know if you know it. Like these guys, four guys do these practical jokes. But yeah, I, at I certain, never liked that show. Right. But. No, I didn't either. But at a certain point. Everyone in the world know, recognizes those guys. Mm-hmm. So how do they even continue to have a show? Because it's like everyone gets the shtick and knows who they are before they even start. And my thing with Shark Tank is, like, after a while, everyone has watched Shark Tank. They know, like, what the what happens on the show. Like, I mean, there's, like, so few surprises anymore. Like, okay, it they're going to bust, like- bust my balls on the numbers. Like, at that point, if you don't know the numbers, like, why are you even coming on the show? Yep. You know, it's- Kevin's going to say your valuation sucks. Mark's yeah. going to try and defend you and say it's not that bad. Right. Lori has, you're going to say Lori's the perfect partner because I want to get this on QVC. <laughs> yeah. um, they're going to Barb- argue that I can get things on QVC too. You know, yep, other people yep. Kevin's going to yep. try and cut a royalty deal. Everyone <laughs> yeah. else is going to say that that's a terrible idea. Someone else will go for some more, um, a bigger percentage of your business. Everyone else will tell them that they're being greedy and it's like, yeah. or everyone's just going to say your idea sucks and they're going to beat around the bush way too long to get to that point. Yeah. And Mark gets so pissed when anyone uh, is coming in there as a snake oil salesman. Like if you're yeah. doing something, anything like supplement fitness related and it's not science backed, I do like how he's like, no, you like he, that's like a really hot button thing with him. If you're trying to do that, he is all on top of it yep, right he, away. He is quick to get on that, which some of those like, why, why do you even why do you even give these people a platform by putting them on right. TV? Like you want to say that to the producers, but anyways, though. So after it, I always see the ads for the profit. I'd never, I had never actually seen an episode, and I've caught one and a half of them somewhat recently. And to me, that is a show that I think a lot of business owners should watch. Like the guy comes in in the in the limited amount I've seen, he's not making unsound business decisions. He's basically saying like, Hey, your business is lacking process. Your business is lacking roles. Um, you don't have people doing these things. You're making unsound money decisions and you need to do this, this, and this. And also there's some marketing advice in there. There's some sales advice in there. And a lot of the things are very actionable items. It's not like, Mm -hmm. Oh, pie in the sky. We just sit around and talk and you dream and you have, if you, if you want it bad enough, it's none of that stuff. It's like, no, you need to right. do this, this, and this. And I've, I've enjoyed the, the little bit I've seen. I actually want to watch more episodes. So that's something I'm going to, going to try and do here. Yep. Oh, I think, I think, it, I think that he's a pretty, he's pretty intelligent too. Most of his ideas are probably pretty sound too. And it's, it's not, um, I don't like shows that are obviously most people probably don't like that are overly staged, like a oh. reality based show. That's a little too staged. And it's been a while since I've watched it, but I don't remember it being that bad. Like, I think it's, no, I, I, pretty... I didn't think it was, yeah, it's not like I, I'm to the point. I basically, I can't even stand to watch any type of talent show right now because they're so produced and fake. Yeah. I almost started laughing at how, how, how over the top it is. I, I was, yeah. um, I was at my in-laws house last night and America's got talent was on and there was actually scenes in the show where I couldn't tell if they had filmed it prior like they're like, it, yeah. I'm pretty sure at some point the the producers say, "All right, everyone, stand up and throw your hands in the air because we need to get this footage we can splice in." And it just it's such a disaster of fake footage, of yeah. Just terrible. We're pretending that this is cooler than what it is. Right. You can't do those shows. And then on top of that, you know, most reality TV is just awful too. So it was maybe a to me it felt like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I just had a thought cross my mind like. We're in two separate rooms, so it's the giant elephant in both of our rooms. Is were you driving a Buick earlier today? <laughs> I was driving a Buick. Uh, had to what have was a, what was that sweet ride? Well, 
You know, the funny thing is, is I, I did have, I, we, we own a Mercedes and the Mercedes was in the shop and the, they, they know I'm a man of luxury when the loaner yeah. car they give you is a Buick. They know it's not just anybody coming in there. They say, all right, this person demands the finest, get the Buick out. Uh, and like any good Buick, it was <laughs> silver, obviously, because uh. what, what other color would it be? Um, it felt like it had some power to it though. I do got to give it that it, it does. It does oh, have some, oh, they're snappy. It. They're <laughs> snappy little <laughs> they, units. They are. I will uh, agree, we'll agree with the snappy part. I don't know if I'll agree with the little part of that statement. <laughs> 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 and it, yes, it, it, it is a unit too though. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I did. I did get to drive a little bit of American muscle. I actually have, yeah. it, sitting, I actually have it sitting in my garage right now. So oh. news on my front is I'm, I'm still, I mentioned months and months ago I was considering selling the Buick LeSabre. Yeah, do we have an um, update there? No, no update. I have not so the update is I have not sold the Buick LeSabre. It's re- really a hard decision for me. I can't I've waffled and gone back and forth many times and Well, you want it to I go to know. someone that will like appreciate it. Oh, that's you know? the, that's the thing is like it has to go to a good home otherwise I'm just not going to do it. Like I that would <laughs> I'd be sick to my stomach if I knew it went to a bad home. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> But it is not sold yet. Uh, it's actually in the shop right now, if you can believe that. So are you getting like a, a a footprint gas pedal installed? Yeah, footprint gas pedal. Some uh, uh, lights that shifter. go. Yeah, some lights <laughs> that go around the outside. So when okay, it's dark yeah. and when I uh, the, pull the up, underglow. like yeah, the underglow <laughs> lights. Uh, yep. A ba- a light that goes off with my subwoofer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. These these should all help. These should all help the resell and the book yeah. value too. Because I'm bumping a couple couple sets of twelves in the back of the Buick Lesabre, so I like it. I like it. Very cool. No, nah, it's getting a check engine light fixed. Oh. Nothing, is, nothing as cool as all that. Uh, it is a light, just a different kind of light. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Is that enough for the Massonomics Auto Corner this week? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have to choose each week between either aut- automotive or uh, weather. So. Yeah. Oh. Well, it weather, has been raining we, a shitload. It has, it has been <laughs> raining like crazy lately. Yeah. Uh, we did have some tornadoes not far away too, so uh, we would be we would be neglecting our duties if we didn't tell people about that. I watched Twister last night. Uh, um, my favorite Helen Hunt movie. Yes, Twister. Yes, your <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a fat bastard line yep, for anyone yep, that's yep. not up on their Austin Powers. We do like to bring up Austin Powers whenever possible <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a that movie is, I struggle with some of the, it's not very realistic, the <laughs> Twister movie. I, I, str- uh, that's, I hadn't seen that in probably 10, 15 years and a little disappointed in Twister. I probably haven't seen it since I was in elementary school. I'm yeah. guessing, okay, do you think that movie came out in like 98 or something? I thought it was 94, but maybe I even saw that. Oh, so I really? Cheating. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me, let me check. Cause I want to know this right now. Twister movie 96. Okay. I remember seeing this in the theater. I would have been seven then and being absolutely terrified of tornadoes yeah. <laughs> when I left because we live in the Midwest. We get tornadoes for several years after that. Anytime a tornado warning was on TV, I was very afraid. Yeah. I The other note from that is that Phil, I didn't know Philip Seymour Hoffman was in Twister and I was like, oh, that's Philip. Oh. You know, I was like, he played like some stoner guy on the crew, like a young stoner guy and i was like huh that's funny oh really yeah uh, you know that's funny that you say on the crew like the the storm chasing crew or whatever yeah yeah uh i was picking up some food at a restaurant here a few days ago right right actually before the big storm hit and in in the the parking lot at this restaurant there was a very large like tour van and on the was side the storm, it said st- storm chasing tour and they were their uh, license plates were out of kansas so nice that's how you know you had a good one coming through the area and it was Helen Hunt's crew. <laughs> and it was they had a picture of Philip Seymour Hoffman and yeah. Helen Hunt on the side of the van. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna read some ads here. All right. This episode of the Massonomics Podcast is brought to you by Hybrid Performance Method. If you've been training without a coach and have been looking for a competitive edge, remember to check out hybridperformancemethod.com. Hybrid has 15 different strength and fitness programs covering everything from powerlifting and strongman to gymnastics and general fitness all included in one training membership. That's not all. Hybrid also offers one-on-one personalized nutrition coaching that uses lifestyle habits and a flexible approach to shape your nutrition plan around your current lifestyle. 
instead of turning your lifestyle upside down in order to support unsustainable habits that only work in the short run the way most programs do. If you're ready to take your training, nutrition, or both to the next level, use code MASS in all caps for 5% off membership to all programs for the life of your membership. Today's show is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At the time, he was working for Image Barbell building gym equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them, calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became Champion Barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent of changing them for the better. In 1979, Buddy bought his first lathe and began addressing the known issues. In 1980, his passion, drive, and purpose now had a greater mission. Buddy set out on, out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he had ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house, with the best knurling, and was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, massonomics, international, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. To learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one of their legendary bars, visit TexasPowerBars.com. And today's show, the Massonomics Podcast, is also brought to you by Spud Inc. and the Spud Inc. Axle Straps. Measuring in at 30 inches in length, no axle baller is too girthy or thick for these straps. Built from Spud's incredibly strong woven nylon, you won't be able to blame these straps when you miss a lift in front of all your used-to-be friends. Uh, these straps are backed with a lifetime warranty and custom strap lengths are available if you reach out to them and let them know. Uh, check out Spud Inc. and their axle straps online at spud-inc-straps.com. And also on today's sponsor list is Lifting Large. Lifting Large sets the new standard for customer service within the strength world. Get email responses in hours, not days. They now have live website chat support available during the weekdays so you can get Advice from a real power lifter with actual platform experience. The Lifting Large team wants to help you achieve new PRs in the gym and on the competition stage. When you're ready to try single ply and make your way to the dark side, give them a call. Lifting Large is home to the ground lock deadlift slipper, and it's always in stock and always ready to ship. Massonomics listeners can save 20% on all Lifting Large branded products by using discount code MASS20 at checkout. That's M-A-S-S-2-0 to save 20% on all Lifting Large branded items. Place your orders at LiftingLarge.com and you can follow them on Instagram at LiftingLarge.com. That's at LiftingLarge, D-O-T-C-O-M. Thank you to the Massonomics sponsors. Thanks, sponsors. Also, this is sponsored by the new Massonomics 8-bit powerlifting t-shirt. Yes, yes. We uh, released that. Yeah, we released that to rave reviews. We're not joking when we say rave reviews. People really liked it. They were raving, ranting and raving about how much they liked it. And in the in the off chance that you tried to buy it immediately and you mm, didn't get it, we yeah. did. Um, our, our website platform is Squarespace. It is a very big website platform. And yep. they had a slight outage the night that we released our night. shirt, which is the absolute worst time something like that could ever happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you tried to order it and it wasn't working, there was a, a few hours where there was some some issues. Uh, we're very sorry about that. Absolutely nothing we could do about it. Uh, so uh, please, there's nothing we can do other than on. other than I got really really annoyed by it the whole time yeah. it was going on. Other than just like frantically checking yeah. their status page to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the most we could do is just repeatedly check it and yep. and be. And t- and text each other that we're pissed that it's happening. <laughs> yeah, and to watch sales come in and sales just disappear, not know why. Actually, yeah. be notified by Brandon Campbell that things aren't working. Yeah, right. yeah. Brandon's and like, yeah, just, your site's down. Yeah, yeah. And then just sitting there waiting, 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 and then all of a sudden orders start coming in again, and all you can think is, ah, how much money did that cost us? <laughs> yep. So but hopefully so, we didn't lose yeah. anyone. We apologize for any. Uh, frustration it might have caused people but please go back on and buy it if you haven't yep do it to it all right tanner we're gonna do something very unusual for this podcast and that's have a somewhat serious discussion about about the state of the world right now and which i'm actually which is pretty rare for this podcast I'm a, yeah i'm actually over generalizing a little bit when i say the state of the world i'm gonna say the state of a few current affairs yeah. and before we even get started, like 
Massonomics, we, we intentionally avoid talking about almost anything serious. Like yeah. our kind of our unofficial rule, we, we haven't sat down and developed right. a firm rule book of what you do and don't talk about with massonomics, but there's so much seriousness, negativity, bad things, everything happening in the world. Like this yeah. is our one chance. We feel like the hour where it can be everyone's break from all of that. We can talk yeah. literally about nothing and somehow s- there's certain people that still want to listen. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always this element of lifting to it, but there's just, it's almost to the point where it's unavoidable now, the, the, the amount of stuff going on. Yep. And the, the one right now, how this became even more real in the fitness world was um, the, the CEO of CrossFit, um, Greg Glassman, right? Is that yeah, Glassman, Glassman. Yeah, yeah. And I think I don't really follow Cross the CrossFit ins and outs. This is one. Neither that, of us uh, do, obviously. N- neither of us do. Right. We don't go to a CrossFit gym. Um, you know, we're aware of what's going on with CrossFit from a peripheral point of view, just because right. you know it, it's in the space. They have tons of money behind the company, and uh, earlier on, uh, one of the former members of our owners of Massonomics, Tyler, who was mm. on the podcast for the first hundred and some episodes, he owned a CrossFit gym. So right. uh, we, we were, we were fairly in the loop on what was going on. And um, I think Greg Glassman has kind of had a reputation as maybe having a bad streak of saying, yeah, being a little bit of a nutbag. Yeah. 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 Right. And just, yeah, not being exactly who you would want to represent your company and at times being a PR nightmare. Right. And this, this, la- this latest one for him was um, you would have to totally live under a rock to not know what's going on with uh, the Black Lives Matter protest and George Floyd and, and everything happening with that. And he had a tweet. I think he was trying to make a joke. I think. I mean, it, it would take like the intelligence of a kindergartner to know like you, it was a very off taste joke. Like it wasn't right. It wasn't in good taste at all. And to think like you wouldn't get any backlash on it, you would have well, to be incredibly stupid. And then yeah. to think like that people would think it's like funny. I mean, you, the demographic you're going after, if you want people to laugh at that is typically not the demographic you want supporting you. And so um, rightfully so he came under a lot of heat for it. And this is a situation that's unfolding while we're, while we're talking here. Yeah. Um, the first thing that started happening is sponsors started dropping them like crazy. And the, the one that actually shocked me is rogue was out like almost right away. Weren't they? Yeah. I, I heard they were super upset about it and it was like immediately they're like, no way we're parting ways with this guy immediately. And I, I don't think it's a stretch to say part of where, Actually, both of those companies are at today. CrossFit and Rogue is because of oh, each yeah. other. Oh, for sure, definitely. Rogue has probably gained more from CrossFit than CrossFit has gained from Rogue. Even I, I would, I would think. Right? I think so, just because yeah. they have a they have actual merchandise that right. anyone can buy. You know, if you're not right. a fan of CrossFit, th- th- there's not much that that brand does for so, you. But so Rogue has gained a lot for being partnered with CrossFit, and this was serious enough and idiotic enough that they knew immediately they were like, oh no, we want nothing to do with this man from this point forward. Yep. So CrossFit dropped it like dropped him like immediately. So it's no yeah. longer like the rogue CrossFit games or whoever they had right. that branded like that's out. And then uh, quickly after that, I think Reebok was out too. Yep. And Reebok has been there for quite a while. Haven't and they not only been there, but probably fending like warding off Nike and other companies. Like I I'm pretty, from what I understood, Nike wanted in on that, and it was almost like a matter of time until they were going to get it. Is mm-hmm. what I I don't know how accurate that is, but I'd heard that at times. But I bet now Nike would want nothing to do with it. Also, at this point, like, I I or is I that wouldn't right? be surprised if a few years down the road things blow right. over and yeah, someone comes yeah. in. But yeah, for, for the time being, though, they have shot themselves in the foot. Like that's right. gone. Um, as of today, I just saw that now Greg Glassman has stepped down as CEO. And uh, or, Castro, or retired that, or whatever yeah. the name is. Yeah. And Dave Castro now has stepped in. I think that that's pretty much just a symbolic thing. I, I think he still, owns, he still owns what he owns. Like, yeah, did he, still he say owns he's what he giving owns it? When, yeah. Yeah. When CrossFit does well, he's still making money. Like, I, I don't think yeah. the brand has severed all ties with it, with him. I so think they it, had to uh, at least do that, you know, at the, you know, the, yeah, to show like, Hey, yeah, we, we know like he said stuff he shouldn't. And yeah, like we're trying to make a change here. So, um, 
yeah, like that, that's quite, quite a shock. And then I also, just before we started recording, I thought I saw a, a post on Instagram that I think something like 1200 affiliates have dropped the cross. Yeah. That's what I was going to say that. Yes. And that's one of the bigger ones too, because there's a lot of money, I believe, or not affiliate believe fees. a lot of money is made yeah. through those affiliate fees. Like there's a lot that goes with that. Yeah, and have you seen some of the athletes that have said that they are not, like, Froning separated from, I'm pretty sure he said that he is not going to have anything to do with uh, the CrossFit brand at this point in time, so that's pretty huge. And, yeah, and, I mean, that guy, that guy's livelihood and who he is is directly tied to his yeah. success in CrossFit. Um, those affiliates, though, I think that that's huge, and I bet that that's, like the bleeding hasn't stopped there. I bet there's a, like, I bet there's a lot more that'll continue down that path too, which, um, probably rightfully so. Like if I think uh, if I was a CrossFit box owner, I think that would have been, I would have probably go, went that same approach. I would have been like, nah, I don't think so. I don't, not going to be affiliated with this guy. And like, uh, what do we need it for at this point? You know, like we don't, there, it's not, it's not benefiting us much. And by, maintaining that affiliate we have to be uh partners with this guy to a certain extent yeah, you know and i don't think it's any stretch to say that a lot of affiliate owners probably have been looking for a way out for a long right. time it's just yeah ah, uh, we kind of need that brand behind our name yeah. and it's it's tough it, things could be tough if we leave well now at this point crossfit is fairly well established you leave the brand. If you're in with CrossFit, you understand why people are leaving. Right. You know? And so I think for a lot of people like this is, all right, this is our chance to like get out of here and just be our own thing going forward. Yeah. So if, you, if the name of your gym switches from CrossFit, whatever, whatever to generic just, box to just generic box fitness, fitness, who yeah. cares? You I, know, I like they I don't, don't care. People do. Yeah, they don't care. Why would they? they? I mean, nothing has to change at that. You know, nothing changes, I don't think. And um, it's just weird that, that how the word CrossFit, it, like how the company is called CrossFit and that word is just so synonymous with like everything that they do that like people's language isn't going to change. Like, I, you know, I mean, people will still wor use that word. And But I, I don't think any of those gyms will suffer a bit from that. I don't. I don't think that that's... I don't think they're out anything. They're saving themselves money on the affiliate fee. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think so either. I think they'll be fine. And I mean, realistically, I think the comp, the cross, the company CrossFit is rolling in the dough. So, right, the, I, I would have a really hard time believing they're not going to be fine. But this is definitely a blow. Like this is a yeah. sign saying, like, hey, quit doing stuff like this. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then this just. Like we were saying, massonomics is always about fun. We don't want to be serious. We don't want this to be the hour where we lecture you about our political beliefs and right. what's right and wrong in the world. But it's just like, what? there's so many things at this that just frustrate me. And it's one is like, why can't people get along? Like it mm -hmm. blows my mind how people don't get along. Like I yep. just, how like we, we are... Like Tanner, we're definitely outsiders to this. We're we're white males in South Dakota, right? And I I could pull up the census data, and probably for the town we live in, it's probably I'm sure ninety two percent white, probably four percent native, and probably two percent black. And whatever percent I have left would be other, whatever, yeah. whatever every every other race I didn't cover. So we are about as undiversified of an area as you could ever live in. Yes. And so like we are so removed from so much of what's going on in the world, but like, I just, the fact that there's still racism in the world, I guess there's always going to be, but the fact that there's such a blatant racism in the world at times yeah. just blows my mind that, that people are okay being that shitty to other people and that people just are for, still doing just that. for the color of their skin too. Yeah. And I don't, ah, it makes my head hurt. And I see the stuff on TV and I don't understand it. I never will. And like, even I, I, I like to think of myself as not racist. I, I don't think I am. I, I right. really like, I believe that everyone should have a fair chance at things in life. And you know, these preconceived stereotypes and biases that people have, they're not good. They don't right. do, they don't do anything for us. And I think for the most part, most of my friends have that same belief too. At least I haven't any of my personal friends, I haven't came across an instance where they say something. I'm like, whoa, man, yeah, is that right. actually what you believe? 
And so I just kind of start to think that everyone I associate and everyone I know or everyone in my community thinks the same way. I, I just start to think that. And then things start popping up in the news and you read the comments on Facebook and it's like, whoa, and they not only terrible. is this a dumpster fire, yeah. but there are some straight up racist people around here. And yeah. it's just shocking to me that in the year 2020, people still act like that. And I mean, it's upsetting. I don't like it. And <laughs> clearly I don't have the answer for this. I, I don't, I, I don't. And I, I don't know what, what, what it takes for the world, but it's just one of those things where you want to say, like, why can't we just get along? Like, yep. what happened that there is this going on? And, and then the other thing that really frustrates me, too, is you have these protests going on. And by and large, these protests, I mean, yes, they're, they're, it's trying to call attention to um, um, black lives and, and how pe black people are specifically being treated and probably even more specifically being treated by police. Yeah. So you get these ra these rallies and protests of people uh, protesting police brutality and they're met with more police brutality. And it's like, yeah. what is that? Like, when did yeah. the police become this military force? That's you, th this, that's not a branch of the military, but this domestic military force where the enemy is, fellow American citizens. And like, that makes me like, as an American, why do you want to see your police beating your, your fellow, your fellow right. citizens? There are cops out there that are not bad, of course. And there's actually probably a lot of cops that agree with us even that think, and that are aware enough that know that there's a problem in some places and to some Degre degree you know whether how widespread it is and stuff we don't know i don't nobody knows of course but it's without a doubt that it exists like i mean it and that it is a problem and i think a lot of other police officers that are self-aware with that would would agree with that too right like i mean they they agree, i would hope know? so but yeah. i also see stuff on tv of them not and like yeah. that kind of i'm just at a loss for words when yeah. when i when i see that too of like <laughs> of Cops straight up like abusing, shoot, shooting tear gas into crowds and shooting people with rubber bullets that for more or less are peacefully protesting. And I'm like, ah, oh, why is this happening? And yeah, it's getting to the point where it's so tough to just make it through life with this yeah. stuff. And that's, that's kind of what I struggle with even personally too, because my main focus, not specifically related to this, just always in life, like I'm more concerned, like I purposely try to be this way. I'm more concerned about me and my family and like my, the immediate things that I control within my life. And like, that's always my primary focus. Like I care the most about my family and I want to make sure that my family is doing the right things and is well taken care of and like everything there. And like, I probably devote like 95% of my time to that. And then it's like my, my friendship circle and that stuff. And, but like you said, that's probably is like, then I struggle because it's like, well, is that uh, a privilege issue that, you know, I don't have to worry about that other stuff. Well, I know. And it's I like, yeah, but I'm like, I, I think it is a bit of a luxury that yeah. we can sort of bury yeah. our heads in the sand right. here. And I, I th that's not to say like, if I see someone, if I see someone being racist, like I'm not right. going to be like, Oh, oh I don't yeah. Right. Right. Call right, the racist right. out. It's like, Hey man, that's not how you treat people in the world. Right. Like, there's no room for that in modern society that yeah. shouldn't exist anymore, but it does. And this is the Massonomics podcast. It's supposed to be the hour of fun. And we, I think we've spent now maybe yeah. 15 minutes, probably to some people, we are probably ranting. Some people were probably not doing enough, but um, black lives do matter to me. And yeah, I, I think it wasn't, it's important for us to say something and you know, it, that people know that uh, it's important to us. And um, you know, I mean, if we never say anything, that's probably, that's probably a problem. Like we can't act like nothing's happening. Oh, yeah. with that, and I don't so. think, I don't think that Insta, like, no, Instagram, like Instagram posts, talk. I don't think are the answer either. Like has anyone, th this is like something I legit have wondered all my life. Yeah. Has an adult looked at something on social media and was like, Hmm, I'll I changed my mind. Yeah. Now. Like you, you know what? You persuaded me young man yeah. with that, uh, with your yeah, arguing. I, I don't and know if, your, yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. if anyone will read anything. They might see a, a video of a cop beating the shit out of someone and be like, Whoa, that changed my perspective. But yeah, very few people will ever read anything and be like, ah, yeah. Okay. I'll take that fact. And my mind has been changed. I just most did a one eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Most people are only seeking out what they already agree with for sure. And, um, that's why it's like, uh, the, 
and there's already so many other places doing that. I don't think Massonomics has anything to contribute online on Instagram to on Instagram, especially we talked to the, trying to, yeah, we specifically talked that us voicing something on the podcast is a much more worthwhile use of our time and anyone that consumes our content than putting something. It, yeah, on Instagram. It allows, it allows for more nuance. Everything on Instagram yeah. turns into just a right and wrong black and white yeah. this way or no way type of discussion. And, um, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't invite any type of, thing that feels productive i guess we'll just right. keep on going and try to be positive and just be better people right i think that's what right. we all got to do at the end of the day be better people i agree with that without turning this into some motivational podcast we all yes mark, we, mark bell already has that side covered so we don't need to worry about that right not only can we cover not too many serious topics we also can't get too motivational because that's also <laughs> not our forte yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, Tanner. Do we have anything else to add to that conversation? No, I think that that's. I think that that says what we have to say. You know, if if maybe down the road we'll have more to say. You know, maybe there's we we feel like there's more uh, with that we can contribute to contribute to it at some point in time. Then we'll we'll do it. But um, I think for now that's that's all pretty fair. Well, should we move on to more lighthearted things? Yeah, back to what we're good at, I suppose. Right? <laughs> <laughs> something we know something about, yes. which is nothing. <laughs> That sentence might not make sense on the surface, but if you are familiar no, with us, it, it makes actually, perfect sense. It actually makes really good sense. Yes. Uh, one thing one thing we do know a lot about is uh, a segment we like to call overrated, underrated. We know so mm. much about it that you probably already remember the rules, don't you? Mm, yeah. Okay. Topic number one this week on overrated, underrated for episode 219 of the Massonomics podcast, the lifting podcast about nothing is stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> <laughs> stuffed crust pizza. Hmm. Part of me, part of me likes to think of myself. I don't actually don't even, I was going to say this. I don't even, <laughs> I was going to say, part of me likes to think of myself as a pizza purist, but I'm like, I don't even know what the hell a pizza purist is. I don't know what, what yeah. pizza in its most traditional there's sense There's too is. many factions really. Like there's, too, there's too many factions. My favorite type of pizza is the thin crust that really focuses on the toppings, the sauce, all of that. And I like mm. that nice, thin, crispity crust. And get, get the bread out of the way and let the other stuff be the star of the show. Uh -huh. That's my type of pizza right there. Uh, <laughs> stuffed crust pizza. Again, it's trying to bring the crust back to the forefront. Yeah. But, but the with fact cheese. That it's bringing, <laughs> the, the fact that it's bringing basically a cheese stick to the, to the party <laughs> is what gives it some redeeming qualities. Yeah. I do it's that think, though, mozzarella. It is that mozzarella, yeah. Uh, I still think, like, I never am going to really, given the choice, I'm almost never, ever, ever going to order stuffed crust pizza. So I'm going to say stuffed crust. Is, mm -hmm. is, it's a little overrated. My th And, I mean, we, we talk when you talk about stuffed crust pizza, I think it's synonymous with Pizza Hut, right? The inventors I think, of isn't it? Yeah. Were I mean, they the, the ones that invented it? I, I believe so. I mean, at, certainly the ones that popularized it. But my theory always on this was, and I, I don't know if this is valid, but it, it's always the way I felt, is that they did something to the rest of the pizza to make it in, more inferior than their traditional hand-tossed pizza. When you got the stuffed crust, sure, the stuffed crust part of it is great. But the regular pizza, I think there's, I don't know what it is. I could never put my finger on it, but I think something oh. was, something was <laughs> like skimped saying, in yeah, the, like you're saying, like you're getting inside like a, the crust, like, like it right, cut yeah, out that like, outer like, circle. Oh, okay. Like our normal pizza is our A game. And yes. they see stuff crust on the order. Like, all right, bring the B game to the <laughs> right. rest of the like, pie. Like, you know, those top shelf ingredients that there's a, something a little less we can get away with here. And yeah, I really felt, yeah. I re this is kind of a joke, but I really always felt that way that there's something lesser to the rest of the pizza. I, I think there could be something to that argument. I, I would buy I would buy that. Yeah, we'll see what the people say. Okay. Overrated or underrated Oakley's. Oakley's. Oakley's it's it's really interesting as a brand. Oakley kind of rides the line between like preppy douchey <laughs> between between being a brand known as like a preppy douchey brand yeah. and also being a brand known as like cool. Like yeah. they a hundred percent when I think about it. I'm not sure that there's many companies that can like ride that line as good as they do because they, they absolutely in certain circles do have that prep. Oh, this guy and his freaking Oakley's came yeah. over and tried to talk some shit, you yeah. know, like you know, Chad, Chad <laughs> yeah, and his right, Oakley's right. came over and like, smashed, they absolutely had that monster yeah. energy. And uh, yes, yeah. yes. A hundred percent. Like 
like they absolutely have that men are that image, but then they also have like the, Oh yeah, you have the snowboarders in the X games wearing their Oakley goggles and then they can get done and throw on Oakley sunglasses. And that's kind of considered cool still. Yeah. Not many people can pull that off. Oakley as a company though, mm, if we're talking premium sunglasses, the, the very limited amount of, Oakley's I got to put on they're they're a they're a good product uh, I don't think it's an inferior product but um I think that they're maybe a little overrated that's fair I kind of I would agree I I, I, was, I was just shocked at the way that brand basically a sunglasses brand gets people so 100% bought in where it's well, like, you, but, like but you could say the same thing yeah. about like an energy drink, brand. right? How yeah, does energy Monster drink. Monster is a great example in? too. Like I would categorize them together. It's like, how are you getting them so bought in on like your product is an energy drink, like, but people mm-hmm. just love your st- thing. I don't know. That's yeah, my, that's yeah, and yeah. But Oakley I think some o- example. But there again, I do also think Oakley has some probably really nice sunglasses. So they do. Yeah. yeah. They, I, I, they, if someone was offering up free Oakleys, I would gladly yeah. take. There's some styles I want, but I would gladly take quite a few styles. Right. I'm just, uh, when I think of, but uh, when I think about it out loud, like I own Ray-Bans. I would still probably say Ray-Bans are a little overrated, but I would also buy another That's, pair. Like, I have Ray-Bans. I love my Ray-Bans. But, yeah, they're yeah, nice sunglasses yeah. and they're timeless and classic. Right. You couldn't say that about a lot of Oakley styles. But That's true. I'm still sticking with overrated. Overrated or underrated? Rob Deerdick. <laughs> uh Oh, I was going to say, Rob Deerdick, he did not have an Oakley sponsorship. He did have a Spy uh, sunglasses sponsorship. Oh, uh, if you okay. wa- remember for a while when Robin uh, when Robin Big was really yeah. big. God, Robin Big, that, that show, that show was, that, that was a good one. Like, I that loved, show, I loved Robin. I actually bought several big black t-shirts. I still have them, a couple of them, you know, the B and the backwards B yep, next to each big other. Big black, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah RIP. I, I had several of his t-shirts because I, I, I loved that show. It was like nothing better than that at the time to me. And it was just fun. Like that yeah. was a straight up just fun TV show. Like yep. they weren't manufacturing dumb, crazy amounts of drama. It was just these two guys going out and having fun. And I loved that show. And then even Fantasy Factory. Mm-hmm. I didn't like Fantasy Factory quite as much, but it just basically took what they had built and yeah. went even I more I think everyone could agree. Still entertaining. No, every, everyone could agree Fantasy Factory wasn't as good as Robin Big, but it was still good. Mm-hmm. But then what it was about... Still good. What about... Uh, what's the... Ridiculousness? Yeah, yeah. Hate it. Don't yeah, like it. Sucks. I don't like <laughs> it. I really... Because I, I do believe Rob Deerdick is a smart businessman. Um, I think his, his mentality or his thought process was... I need to get a show that can like go into syndication forever. Like America's funniest home videos. Right. I will do this. I will always be able to, cause you could put a ri- video of ridiculousness on now or, or 20 years from yeah. now. It's still just people getting hurt and doing dumb things. Yeah. Their clothes are going to be different. Not smashing, it's, smashing it's their fairly, nuts on Yeah. The it's rail. fairly timeless. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the stuff in like fantasy factory and Robin big, it kind of was of the times a little bit. So those won't hold up as good uh, many, many years down the road to, to new audiences, I think. Right. So I think that I wouldn't be surprised if like that was his attempt. Like, all right, this show could live in perpetuity like forever. And like, I can always collect some money with it. But Rob, what was it? Rob Deerdick? Was that the original one? Yes. Rob Deerdick. Yes. Rob Deerdick. <sighs> he's probably kind of underrated. I mean, the guy is pretty accomplished for what he's, for a guy that started life as a skateboarder for, yeah. I think he was on like Alien Workshop or Habitat or something like was and DC Shoes. Like, not many people can can pull off what he did, so I think I'm gonna go underrated. He's pretty cool. Seems pretty cool. Like <laughs> he be pretty fun to hang out with, right? Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was fun to watch his uh, his his uh, whatever he had going on that week. Um, last topic then: overrated, underrated. This is an important one. Crocs. <laughs> Crocs. I don't know. I'm <laughs> Crocs were I, Crocs kind of went. I think Crocs have almost gone full circle where they got cool right away. They got really uncool. And I think they're kind of picking up again. I think so. Um, what about Crocs with socks? Crocs. with I, don't, I just don't <laughs> care about Crocs at all. I don't. I'm I'm not on. Hey, if you want to wear Crocs, I don't care. Have you ever you put a pair Crocs, on man. before? 
I've stepped in a pair and that's it. I never I think, have. I think someone showed up to my house one day in them and I stepped in them. That was it. You want to wear them? That's fine. I don't like them. This is a style I don't care for. So I'm out, but, uh, so I'll say overrated, but you do you, man. Yep. Um, they sure look hideous, right? <laughs> <laughs> they got that going. We can all agree on that, that, can't we? Like that they're yep. they're absolutely hideous. <laughs> you know, Kanye West, uh, Tanner, I know you're not a huge shoe guy, but are you familiar with the Yeezy line of shoes? I am mostly from Huck Finn wearing them at uh, the Arnold last okay. year. And I was like, <laughs> okay. and I said, what are those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeezy. Uh, Kanye West does have a shoe. You could almost say it's the modern day croc. And, uh, I'm trying to remember what they're called. If, uh, I'm trying to wake up my computer either way. Just look up the, uh, the Kanye West like slide. It's not the slide. It's just a crazy, um, it's like the easy take on a croc. Yeah. You might be blown away by what you're looking at. Yeah. All right. Overrated, then, was the answer, though, for Crocs. Overrated was the answer. All right, that wraps up overrated, underrated. Uh, I would also like to touch on our sponsors again for this show, though, if, if mm. that's all right with everyone. And the first sponsor being Texas Power Bars. And by now, you probably all know the story about how Texas Power Bars were born, so I was just going to tell you about their product line. There's, of course, the Texas Power Bar, the Texas Deadlift Bar, the Texas Squat Bar. We have all three all three get used all the time. I just watched someone in the gym today squatting over 500 pounds with the old Texas squat bar, and it's, she ain't bending, so that's that's what it's built for. And we, that's how you know it's the real deal. Yeah, we've got that red Syracote Texas deadlift bar, and uh, that, that thing's pretty sweet. I've been That's been my go-to one every time. I uh, It looks the coolest, and it's the newest, so got to go with the Texas deadlift bar for me. Mm-hmm. And you can check them out at texaspowerbars.com. Next, we have our dear close friends at Lifting Large. Um, and, of course, you know that Lifting Large has set a new standard for customer service within the strength world. Their website chat support is live, and their speedy or and their email responses are speedy. Lifting Large is home of the ground lock deadlift slipper. I've got a pair of those in my locker at the gym right now that I've been using. Those are always in stock, and they're ready to ship. And because Massonomics listeners are so important, you can save 20% at Lifting Large on any of their Lifting Large branded products by using our discount code, which is MASS20 at checkout. And then uh, Spud Inc., of course, our good friends at Spud Inc. Straps. They make products that support sports performance and help everyone achieve their training goals. They make products that last forever, will not bust your budget, and most importantly, leave no doubt about success when everything is on the line. Just saw... uh, one of our followers posted that they purchased what was it the safety safety, the safety squat, squat bar straps strap. um and because of a recommendation on our show that so that was cool to see and then last but not least this uh, show is brought to you by hybrid performance method i would say if you're in the market for uh training or nutrition coaching go to their site uh the programs are pretty affordable and there's programs out there for uh just about anything regardless of what your goals are you'll find something that fits those goals uh they're reputable and probably the best part is you can use our discount code which is m-a-s-s mass in all caps and that'll save you five percent off any of those memberships on their website at hybridperformancemethod.com those are our sponsors of course you guys know about all the great massonomic stuff we got a whole store full of it and our website works again now like it's supposed to we've got the eight bet powerlifting shirt um it's the newest and coolest. And then we've got all other favorites. Don't Curl in Me flags are back in stock. They were out for a little while. And those Ooh, just showed yeah. up here, so get on those. Oh, the other last thing I would mention is our uh, supporting membership, pot, uh, what do we say, supporting podcast membership options. Yep. We've got the big three options still. The <laughs> I don't think we have – we barely even said the word apple pie in the show, but no, we have not said apple pie nearly. No, enough. there's the apple pie level, your entry level, the LaCroix level, your mid tier. And then for the ultra elite, there is of course the lift short level of support. And if you like the show and want to support it and watch it continue to grow to these high heights that we're achieving, you can, uh, that's one of the ways you can support us. Well put Tanner. All well right. Put. Excellent. So Tommy, where can they find you on Instagram? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can find me at Tanner underscore Baird. Most importantly, make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See ya. Later.